Hana Maui is one of the most beautiful places in the Hawaiian Islands, and here we are taking you on a complete tour. There is a special place in Hawaii on the eastern shores of the island of Maui. It's Hana, the most isolated and remote town in the Hawaiian Islands. You've got to drive about 50 miles to get there from the nearest town, Paia, along a winding, narrow, beautiful road. We'll see waterfalls, beaches, tropical jungle, then we'll show you around Hana Town and meet some locals, where you'll discover what a remarkable place it is. Then beyond Hana, we'll go to the Haleakala National Park shoreline and visit the pools of Oheo. So let's get started by driving that famous road to Hana. The closest main town is Paia. Before you actually start the road, and then you arrive at Ho'okipa Beach, a great place to view the ocean, and it's one of the world's best windsurfing beaches. It's worth a quick look, but don't stay long because you want to get started on the road as early in the morning as possible to minimize the traffic you'll encounter on what is actually a very busy road. The road is one of the most scenic drives you'll ever do. Although it is a little perilous as you go around all of these curves. Some of them are blind curves. But don't worry, with normal precautions and good driving, it is very safe. The road has about 600 curves and hardly any straight sections, keeping you busy at the steering wheel. And there are 59 narrow bridges, which takes a little time and patience because sometimes you have to stop and wait your turn. But it is one of Hawaii's most beautiful drives, passing waterfalls, lush tropical jungle, roadside food stands, and isolated beaches, some of them with black sand. Right away at the two mile road marker, you'll come across one of the most popular places of the entire journey, and that is Twin Falls. The food wagon has a selection of fruits all grown on Maui, along with baked goods and other snacks. They have public restrooms, bamboo forests, lots of exotic photo opportunities, and easy trails for walking that will lead you over nice. to the stream and to a series of waterfalls. Within a few minutes of parking your car in the convenient parking lot, you are in the jungle, walking along on this beautiful natural trail. And then you come along the stream and soon enough, you see the waterfall. It's okay to jump in the water and take a swim, maybe get right under the waterfall, but don't swallow any of the water. It might be slightly contaminated with leptospirosis, like all stream flowing water in the Hawaiian Islands. Don't drink it. The footing can be a little tricky walking over these tangled roots, all part of that jungle experience. Or take a jog along that upper trail and make like Tarzan and cross the stream on a fallen tree trunk bridge. Twin Falls is free and open to the public and yet it's privately owned by Wailale Farm. They care for the land with natural farming and ecological living serving the public this way ever since 1997. You could leave a tip in their basket to support them. The Maui Visitor Bureau has put together a code of conduct for driving the road to Hana. It is a list of very helpful recommendations that will enable you to get the most out of your drive to Hana with the least difficulty and with courtesy to all of the other drivers on the road. During the drive, I'll be sharing some of those suggestions with you. For example, a good place to stop for a little break is Kaumahina State Wayside Park. They have free public toilets and there's picnic benches and there's a family of feral cats waiting for you here. There are not very many other public toilets available on the rest of the road. So when you see an opportunity like this, you should stop and take advantage. For example, at Waikamoi Nature Trail, they warn you right away, no waterfall and no restroom. But they do have a very nice hiking trail that will bring you up into the forest. There are several lookout points along the trail as well as a picnic area. Here are some more of those suggestions about getting the most out of the trip. In summary, these rules of the road are telling you to be alert and cautious, use your common sense, 
be courteous to the other drivers, and enjoy yourself. Conduct thorough research before driving the road to Hana. For example, it's good to know where the waterfalls are and what little side trips would be good to take along the way. Map out your intended journey and take note of the mile markers along the way for sites of interest. Do a little research to find out where those viewing points are and road turnoffs and waterfalls, beaches and roadside food stands. Most of the bridges are narrow one lane, so don't stop on the bridge, even if tempted by views of the stream or waterfalls. There's often an area on the side of the road that you can pull over safely and walk back to get that view. One of the most outstanding vistas is looking down at the Kainai Peninsula, and you can actually drive down there. It's a bit of a dirt road, but easily done with your rental car. Kainai is one of the last remote Hawaiian places. Families still live down here, primarily growing taro and other agricultural products like bananas. Taro is grown in irrigated ponds called lo'i and produces a nutritious root crop that's pounded into poi. This jagged, rocky coastline could cut your feet to ribbons if you don't have good shoes on, and it's not a place where you want to go swimming, but makes a beautiful sight to see especially walking out to the water's edge. Kanai is the midway point of the Hana Highway. From Ho'okipa, it's 23 miles and 23 more miles on to Hana Town. Next to Kanai, there's a few more settlements and farms along the coastline and the Wailua Valley State Wayside. You can walk up a staircase and get a look inland to the mountain slopes of Haleakala, rising 10,000 feet high and views in the other direction, out towards the ocean with those beautiful farms in the foreground. Coming up on perhaps the most beautiful site on the drive, it's the Upper Waikani Falls. And there's a path from the road you can actually go down there, but maybe it's easier just to view them from the roadway. There are some convenient places that you can pull over safely, sometimes called three bears for those three separate waterfalls coming down from as high up as 70 feet. When the rains are heavy, it becomes one big waterfall. But you don't really want to be driving here when there is heavy rain. And be very careful when standing on the bridge not to get in the way of the traffic. Drivers are easily distracted here. Pretty soon you'll come upon yet another beautiful waterfall, Hanavi. Even if there has been no rain, there will be water here because it's coming down from way up high in the mountains where it's frequently raining, even when the shoreline is sunny. Safely park beyond the bridge on the roadside, then walk back for the view, but be careful, look out for the cars. They're not watching you. They're looking at the waterfall. You'll also have a vista in the other direction, looking down at the stream and towards the ocean beyond. With 59 bridges, there are about that many streams along the way. None of them would be considered a river, but the Hawaiian stream is one of the most beautiful parts of the landscape. Here you get to look straight down from the bridge, watching that waterfall gush down below. Now we have reached Nahiku Marketplace. It's a fantastic little roadside collection of shops and restaurants. You definitely want to pull in here even if you're not hungry, take a walk and look around and you'll soon work up an appetite, especially when you see them barbecuing that chicken called Huli Huli Chicken, where they turn it over and over and grill it on kiabi wood, something like a rotisserie. It's a traditional delicious meal that you can't find in most restaurants, but it's available here in a casual rustic jungle setting. They even have Thai food. There is an eclectic shop here selling clothing, handmade goods, paintings, and various artworks as described for us by Joanne. This is the Nahiku Market. Which is almost an art gallery now. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little junk place where the guy sells coconut candy. Mm -hmm. Then there was a guy who started selling fish tacos. And he they all became quite famous for what they did because even though it was in the jungle and kind of funky, everybody did it well. Mm -hmm. So, and then it just in the last two years, it just, they learned about food trucks here. 
Oh yeah, art gallery, I see. So, the, the glass is from the Big Island. Hand yeah. paints them with 22 karat gold. Really pretty. And you got these funky old signs. He says our next door neighbor makes these. She People love them. Yeah, and a little <laughs> surfboard, Aloha surfboards. Yeah, $20? <laughs> Nice and quiet and peaceful. It's pretty quiet lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Joanne, too. Thanks okay, a lot. Okay, aloha. aloha. Have fun. Back on the road is a good time to share some more suggestions from the Maui Visitor Bureau. Keep your focus on the road and the forward approaching areas of the road ahead of you. Drive defensively, especially around all those corners and turns, and maintain your full awareness. Don't exceed the speed limit, which sometimes is only five miles an hour at these curves and one-lane bridges. Maintain enough speed to keep up with the general flow of traffic. If you notice a buildup of cars behind you, that probably indicates there is traffic that could maneuver the road more efficiently than you. So pull over to let faster moving residents especially and veteran commuters to go on ahead. There is one very important archeological site that you can reach with a short detour off the main road that will take you to the Pii Lanihale Heiau. It's an ancient Hawaiian temple. It's the largest heiau ever constructed anywhere in Polynesia and one of the best preserved in all the Hawaiian islands made out of basalt rocks piled on top of each other without any mortar holding it together. In typical Hawaiian style, but on a monumental scale, construction began in the 13th century and it was enlarged over time, reaching a height of 50 feet and dimensions of 340 feet by 400 feet wide. It's located at Kahanu Garden, part of the National Tropical Botanical Park where they also have some restored house sites and various stone walls, and a large selection of native plants, continuing along to yet another one of the most fascinating sites along the roadway. To reach it, you take a short detour along this road for about a half a mile, and that will lead you down to a beach park with a black sand beach. And this is a state park where you can actually camp Parking and admission to the beach are free, and the fees for the campgrounds are quite minimal. It's called Wayanapa Napa. Here's how the State Parks Department describes it. Remote, wild, low cliff volcanic coastline offering solitude and respite from urban life. Lodging, camping, picnicking, shore fishing, and hardy family hiking along an ancient Hawaiian coastal trail. Excellent opportunity to view a seabird colony and ankyline pools. Other features include native hala forest, legendary cave, natural stone arch, sea stacks, blowholes, and the black sand beach. The volcanic black sand might seem very unusual to most visitors, but there are other black sand beaches around the island. However, this is the most famous, and part of the beach is little black pebbles, also fun to walk on. To make a reservation, you need to go on their website, posted on the screen now, and for cabin reservations, you need to reserve at least three days in advance. However, to be sure of getting a space, you'll want to reserve several months ahead of time. There are 12 cabins and room for six camper vans offering a pleasant visit as described by a happy camper. Stayed the night with the family, slept in the hammock, uh -huh. easy peasy, saw the whales. Whoa, yeah. Got to uh, have a little nap down on the black, black sand beach yeah. at midnight. Got yeah. your portable house with you. Showers, bathroom, yeah, you can't beat it. Barbecue Beautiful pit. Beautiful beaches, everything clean. At night, it was very quiet, huh? Extremely, extremely peaceful. You can camp here with your own tent or camper van, or you can rent a state cabin if you reserve it well in advance. And the cabin has a two night minimum. Quite inexpensive for the cabin. For a resident of Hawaii, it's $60 per night for the cabin. And for the non-residents, it's just $90 a night for the cabin. And the campground with your own tent or camper van is much cheaper. 
It's just $12 a night, and that's good for six people. So for $2 each, you can spend the night. If you're a non-resident, it's $18 per night for the group of six people. There is a rather magical freshwater cave. It looks something like the Blue Grotto, which is a fine place to end our drive along the road to Hana. The town is just two miles further away. Here we are taking you into Hana town itself to show you what a remarkable destination it is. A place that's worth spending a couple of nights so that you can really explore it fully. We'll be talking with some Hawaiians and Haole and kids playing on the beach, rolling around in that black sand, shopkeepers filled with aloha. They are among the special elements that really make this place come alive. The main reason why Hana is so quiet and unspoiled and not crowded is that it's hard to get here. Hana is one of the most remote communities in the Hawaiian Islands out here on the eastern end of Maui, part of the Hawaiian Islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the most remote major inhabited place on the planet. It's an isolated and rural town, quite unique and special in a class all by itself. If you have time to drop anchor and soak it in, you will experience the authentic and somewhat old-fashioned Hawaii. There's only one gas station here and no traffic lights. We're now arriving at downtown Hana. It has a very small shopping mall. It's really just a couple of stores, a gift shop, post office, and a general store. Packaged food, fresh produce, and a variety of merchandise in the Hana Ranch store. It's a small supermarket with just about everything you'll need when you're visiting town or if you live here. They're open every day from 6 in the morning till 7.30 in the evening, and they've been here since 18.30. Oh. The community bulletin board and small post office in this row of shops is all part of that small town country atmosphere of Hana Town. There's everything you need in your visit. There's a bank. There is a little gift shop with a nice variety of some arts and crafts. Hi. And some handmade items that you'll find nowhere else, including some original oil paintings of tropical scenes. Next door to that, you've got a boutique. Pretty small compared to our modern shopping malls, but it's got a lot of charm. Just across the street, you'll find the only hotel in Hana, the Travassa Resort a very deluxe accommodation featuring private cottages. And they have a dining room that's open to the public. Some excellent food trucks are one block south, and there's also a black sand beach. The small residential complex next to Hana Bay rounds out the extent of central Hana. When hungry, you'll certainly enjoy a visit to the small collection of food trucks. It's got half a dozen different food stands offering quite a variety, including some fresh fish that's caught right here in the shores off of Hana Bay. It's a remarkable collection considering we're out here in such a remote area. There are not that many other food choices in Hana. There's several good restaurants at the hotel and at the Hana Ranch House. And there's a little casual Thai restaurant across the street from here. But this is really the biggest collection and widest variety of eateries in town at a very reasonable price. With quick service, usually it's only 10, 12 minutes from the time you place your order till when the food is ready. There are comfortable outdoor tables where you can sit and eat or take it to go and have a picnic somewhere. And you'll find some friendly workers here who are happy to talk with you. <laughs> oh, tell me, what's the name of this place? This place? Yeah. This is the Hana Town Cafe. Uh huh. Uh, we sell sandwiches, soups, paninis. Uh, sometimes we have specials. Depends on the day. Uh huh. We uh, also do pizza on the weekends. Oh, we also do pizzas on Fridays. Yeah. Our boss also owns the Fish Shack, which oh. sells fish and burgers. That's where I'm eating right now. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it's all locally caught fish, and mm -hmm. so we get it all locally, all of our food from here. Wow, and so they yeah. bring the fish right in at the bay? Yep, yeah, that's oh, exactly where. Okay. Our fishermen, 
We're staying in the, a beach cottage just a few doors down from the bay nice. for nice. two nights. So That's it's nice we can fun. spend some time here yeah. instead of being in a big rush. Yeah. Most people come out for the day and go back, I yeah. suppose. It kinda, it's hard when you do that because there's such a long drive right that you can't really enjoy it because you're always in a rush because <laughs> it takes like get four and a half hours to get yeah, here when much. you take your time yeah. yeah so round trip we're talking maybe 10 hours driving yeah. but people do it yeah most For people us, it takes us about an hour and a half yeah locals it take about an hour and a half, half. yeah <laughs> you drive really fast nope. yeah so <laughs> what about time of day what's the best time of day for you to leave hana either early in the morning or late afternoon yeah yeah late afternoon like yeah. Four or five. Four yeah. or late. Yeah. And then in the mornings, usually from six to seven in the morning is yeah. the best to leave without oh. um, <laughs> having <laughs> traffic. Yeah. Tour buses yeah. reach uh, around Kianai, the halfway yeah. to Hana, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, around nine o'clock. So yeah. we gotta beat them out. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta beat them out. Yeah. yeah. So we don't run into them because the road is really narrow. Oh. Yeah, uh -oh. and a lot of the buses are bigger than their side of the road. Oh, so that's it, a problem. It, it yeah. causes a little bit of a traffic jam when we yeah, run across them. Yeah, I know? see. And it I does see, slow yeah. us down because, you know, they stop at every bridge sure, to sure, look sure, at sure. the waterfalls yeah. and things. We're in no rush, really, to get back to town. Yeah, so did you guys come from the... That yeah, way. yeah. So if you go actually straight, uh -huh. you can go all the way back outside. Yeah, and how is you that road? Go. So it's actually, it's very beautiful. You can see everything from the mountaintop to the ocean when uh -huh. you go that way. And the paving is okay? Um, it's pretty much paved. There's about four or five miles that is gravel. Uh -huh. um, a little bit like cinder kind of um, roadways. Right. And then other than that, it's actually pretty good. As long as you take it slow. The, yeah. the back door. Yeah, <laughs> it's the back way. And do you girls live in Hana? We do. Yes. Yeah, brought up here? Not and raised. She was in Texas for a few years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Texas. I moved to Texas for four years. But other than that, I've been living. Uh -huh. yeah. And you're both Hawaiian. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think in Hana, there's only one school. So pretty much from KNI to Kipuhulu, Kaupo area, they all go to that school or they mm -hmm. go board outside. Yeah. Hana but High and Elementary, yeah. Pre-K to 12th grade. Wow. Well. Yeah. And that's where you went? Yes. On high school. All right. Yeah. The horse waiting across the street reminds us that we are way out in the country. A couple of hundred meters down the road, we reach one of Hawaii's most famous stores. It's Hasegawa, a general store that's got everything. The active bulletin board is Hana's version of social media. And the store is a community gathering place. We had a chance to talk with one of the employees who told us a little bit about the store. It's Hasegawa General Store. And why is it so famous? Uh, since uh, it's been in the family for four generations, my boss is the great grandson of the original proprietor. Mm -hmm. They opened up in 1910. That's uh, how many? That's uh, more than a century. Yes, more than a century. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you've got everything. Yeah, as much as we can. A lot of times I'm even surprised a customer will come in and I'll think, well, there's no way we have that. And they'll come in and they'll ask for something and I'll check with one of my bosses and sure enough, there it'll be. So, uh -huh. yeah. Old fashioned general store. Yeah, there's not that many left. No, and you only find them in small towns where, you know, they don't have big stores. So sure. We gotta have everything. We've seen a few on, on Maui in the little towns. Yeah, right. So what's the hours here? What's We're seven to seven daily. Wow. Every day, yeah. Every day. Okay, and you've got quite a selection. Yep, a little bit of everything. Hardware, groceries, everything. Thank what, you so what much. What you getting? A t-shirt. Oh, a t-shirt. <laughs> Is that one of your biggest general items, store. a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perhaps the nicest part of town, the very essence of place is Hana Bay Beach Park, a sheltered cove with gentle waters, family friendly for locals and visitors alike. There's a boisterous bunch of local kids coursing around with their families watching on them from up above. You're sitting in a yurt? Oh yeah, it's a yurt up here on the hill. Um, we've got an outdoor shower, outdoor bathroom. The beach is picturesque in a unique Hana way, and it's the safest place for swimming in the area. 
and a place to meet some locals. I'm Floyd Kelkai, born and raised Hana. Wow. Yeah. And you stayed? Yeah. Stayed. Working in Hana Ranch? Hana Ranch. Yeah. Floyd's watching his son rolling along, playing on a tire. And how, how would you describe Hana? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's always been beautiful. Huh? And tourism is okay. Yeah, people keep coming. Yeah, it, it gets yeah, so it's getting more, getting more easier. Yeah, you get more bed and breakfast, maybe. Yeah, Airbnb. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> taking over your housing. Yeah, <laughs> more restaurants. Yeah, more places to eat. Yeah, and there is a nice place to eat right here at the beach, Barefoot Cafe. So, so, so how you like it here? Oh, I love it. Sure. I haven't been to Hana 25 no. years. So is this your cafe? Uncle's Uncle. cafe. Yeah, he runs, um, this is it from the county. From the county. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you're just hanging out. Waiting for customers. Work? I work here, though. Uh, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. We always have specials of the day for oh, lunch. Yeah. Okay, teriyaki beef. Plate lunch. Wow, fresh fish. Sweet eye, fresh fish. Whoa. Yeah. Right from right the bank. Right from the boat, yeah. they come out and sell it to our boss. Right now, we're just Oh, Hello. look at me. There, she's the owner. Oh, there she, she is. Hi, Auntie. She's our boss. Hi. Okay, this is your bare, yeah. barefoot cafe. What, what are the hours? Uh, for breakfast, we open from 7.30 to 10. Okay. Breakfast. And then we open back up at lunch from 11.30 to 5. You can enjoy your meal at a picnic table with a scenic view of the beach. You cannot visit Hana without stopping by the beach park. And just about 700 meters along the same shoreline, you'll come to a black sand beach, a delightful place that most tourists never see. Even though, like all beaches in Hawaii, it's free and open to the public. Dogs are free to run around also, as long as their owners are watching over them. And we had a chance to speak with Mike, who moved here many years ago from Honolulu in search of a more quiet and peaceful environment in which to raise his family, including his dog. He gets so excited and he sees people and he thinks there's somebody he knows. So he comes up like... And his beach is pretty empty, so he doesn't see many people here. No, he, there's a couple other dogs that come around. What's the name of this beach? This is Waikoloa. It's a pretty quiet place. People uh, don't really know about this one, I think. Not on the tourist it's track. It's definitely a little secret spot, you know? And it's black sand down that way. Oh, this whole place like. is black sand. How do you like living in Hana? What's it like to live in Hana? Probably like living in Hawaii 100 years ago. A lot of fishermen, a lot of hunters, gathering farmers. Simple, laid back lifestyle. And quiet, not much noise. Yeah, quiet, not a lot of noise, not a lot of traffic. Mm hmm. And you got some secret places? There's a few. <laughs> Not just on the beach, but up in the mountains? Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere is secret and sacred in one way or another. Because the tourists are staying on the main road. and Even the tourists? I mean, the tourists are everywhere. They're like ants. <laughs> but it, what else? I mean, tourists is the main sort of business around here. That's what keeps everything going. And they love it. They do. They, uh, their lives are enhanced by coming here. Right. But, you know, they're always in a rush to go here and go there because their time is limited. Aren't they? Yeah. And they don't really get to slow down and enjoy it. Kind of like you guys kind of slow down at a different pace. Yeah. Most of them do the round trip in one day, I suppose. Yeah. Just decisive so them turn around halfway. Mm, <laughs> never make it to Hana. <laughs> but they say they drove the road to Hana. Yeah. They did it. When you're driving to town, uh, what's your strategy? go at the hours that are not busy early in the morning and so there's a window right around two o'clock and mm -hmm. nobody's there but then probably about five six o'clock picks up everybody's going up interesting but there's there's windows around windows in town mm -hmm. where the roads mm -hmm. kind of was that your friend was that your friend <laughs> thanks mike on the south end of the beach waikoloa becomes more black pebbles than black sand a fascinating texture to walk on There are some vacation rentals clustered along this end of the beach where you could stay at a condominium, such as at the largest in the area, Hanakai Maui Resort, and have your own kitchen. They offer studios, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms. 
you'll get a nice view of the ocean. And in the foreground, that is an ancient Hawaiian fish pond that's been restored. In the old days, the Hawaiians would raise fish in artificial ponds constructed along the shoreline with stone walls. It just takes five or 10 minutes to walk back to the center of Hana from here, where you might visit the Hana Cultural Center and Museum on the grounds of the historic courthouse. It's a short walk over to the ranch restaurant where we are going to enjoy a lovely dinner. It's in that little shopping complex with the post office we showed you earlier. This is also operated by the Trabasa Hotel just across the street from here. We definitely enjoyed this very fine meal. Mmm, it smells great. The fresh catch. Oh. Enjoy, guys. Uh, the restaurant enjoys that essential combination of good food, friendly service, reasonable prices, and casual atmosphere with indoor and outdoor dining. Their famous wall covered with ukuleles is an excellent photo backdrop for the family or a selfie. This was the final night of our tour and the restaurant provided the perfect climax for a week on Maui. But the next morning was even more spectacular. One of the beautiful things about Hawaii is sunrise. So if you are anywhere near a view of sunrise, you should get up in the morning, maybe get up depending on the season, six o'clock, 6.30, and you'll get this fiery sky. Also sunsets, of course, equally beautiful. When visiting Hana, you want to enjoy the beaches just south of town, especially Koki Beach and Hamoa Beach and then continue a few miles along to the Pools of Ohio, which is easy to do if you're spending at least one or two nights in Hana. But if you are attempting the entire road to Hana as a one day round trip, this would be a challenge because of the time it takes. It could be done if you keep moving along, but you'll see how beautiful these beaches are and the pools and it'll make you want to spend more time here. We'll take you there right now. It's another scenic stretch, something like the road to Hana, but look at the sign. It shows you could get back to Wailuku going in either way, either the same road that you took getting to Hana, or you just keep going around the other side of the island. The back road is fairly rough with several miles of gravel surface, and sometimes it's a narrow one-lane winding road. Car rental companies discourage that and will hold you liable for any damage. We turn off the main road down to a small coastal route with lovely views of the sea and passing a famous Huli Huli chicken place, tasty barbecued chicken, on our way to Koki Beach. Today, it's quite calm here and not very crowded. Gentle little waves, ideal for the family, go splash around in the water. There are some days where the surf is bigger, a little stormier, and there's a rip current, so you do have to be careful when you're at Koki. The red sandstone cliff is quite beautiful and most unusual. Depending on waves and tide, you can walk along the shore and follow that cliff for a few hundred yards. The shoreline tide pools are a fine place to stand and enjoy some views of the Pacific Ocean and there's even a little grass shack pavilion for your picnic. But there's no toilet facilities here, so moving along to the next beach on the way, which does have such facilities, Hamoa Beach. There's a well-known listing of the country's top 10 beaches put out by a fellow named Dr. Beach and Hamoa made that list twice in the last eight years. Ernest Hemingway also had a rating for this beach he called the world's best. It's certainly Hana's most famous beach. Another shoreline park with world fame is the Pools of Ohio. It's a few more miles down the road through more of this scenic terrain. There are some scattered houses down here. The mountain above is Haleakala. This area is owned by Hana Ranch. It's a working cattle ranch on 3,600 acres in the Hana area that supports a grass-fed herd of 1,600 cattle who spend their entire lives on the grass. Altogether, it's a 12-mile drive from Hana town to reach the Ohio Pools. 
But it's a lovely trip, as you can see. There's some houses along here with beautiful lawns and flowers in the yard and the mountains up behind. Many of these people would be working for the Hana Ranch. As you might imagine, this is a very quiet neighborhood. When you see people pulling over and parking, there must be something going on. And yes, it's a waterfall, a roadside waterfall. If you can find a parking space off the road, be sure to stop here at Wailua Falls. There's a footpath that you could walk down on the right side if you want to take a little dip in the pool. But just looking at it from the road is so easy and beautiful. It's one of the nicest waterfalls on the entire Hana Road. And then back in your car and continue on the journey and you'll soon be in the park. This is the Haleakala National Park, Kipahulu District. Normal admission fees apply, but if you already paid once to go up to Haleakala Crater, the same ticket is good for three days and will get you in here, so hang on to it. Upon arrival, we were greeted by the ethereal music of a barefoot ukulele strumming singer who really set the mood for us, evoking a mystical spirit of entering into a natural heartland. A quick preview of the shoreline up ahead and one of the pools with waterfall. There are several informative signs describing your walking options. If you go to the left, you're heading to the waterfall and through a bamboo forest and other waterfall. Or take a right and you'll reach the coast in an easy half mile loop walk, which is the direction I'm going to take you on right now. It's the easier route, takes less time and is beautiful. We are in the National Park walking down to the Seven Pools sometimes called the seven sacred pools, but uh, there's more than seven pools and it's not actually sacred. It's in Oheo Gulch on the Hana coastline. It's part of the Haleakala National Park. Oheo Gulch has a reputation as one of the most beautiful stream hikes available anywhere in all the Hawaiian Islands. It's only half a mile with an easy walking path that'll take you 15 or 20 minutes. We are following that red dotted line down to the shore and along the stream passing the pools. Or if we had gone left heading inland following that white dotted line, it would bring you to two more waterfalls on a four mile loop. We've arrived early in the morning because we spent the night in Hana last night. That gives us a big advantage. During the day, it'll be very crowded, hundreds if not a thousand people here. But this morning we'll have it pretty much to ourselves. It also helps that we're visiting in January, which is the low season, less crowded, and more perfect weather with delightful temperatures. In about 10 minutes, you'll arrive at the shoreline, enjoying dramatic vistas along the coast with that rocky cliff and outcrops and little islets offshore. Once you've paid admission to the park, you can camp here for free, no permit required. You're allowed to walk anywhere, just be careful when you're off the trail. You don't want to twist your ankle or trip and fall on your way out to the point for the excellent view along the shoreline. There is no beach here and that ocean water can get pretty rough and gnarly with those rocks underneath, so you do not want to be swimming in the ocean along this shoreline. Just enjoy the view. The loop trail then continues inland along the stream and it gets even more scenic with pools and beautiful plants and the mountain up above. You can walk along parts of the stream if you're careful, but there is a defined trail that makes it easier for the stroll. You'll be getting nice views of the stream as you walk along on the trail and parts of the trail are nicely carved out with stone steps. It makes it very easy for you. You'll soon reach the largest of the pools, almost circular with a delightful waterfall plunging down into it. Yes, you can jump in and swim like this Tarzan and Jane couple who got here early and have the pool to themselves. However, the official park ruling is as follows. Swimming is not recommended in the Kipahulu district of the park. Water quality varies and violent flash floods can occur in the stream at any time. Injuries and deaths 
have occurred. On the way out, you will pass some Hawaiian cultural sites. These are archaeological remains of stone walls that were built probably in the early 19th century in the traditional Hawaiian style, no mortar or cut stone. Similar in kind to the thousands of stone walls that the Hawaiians built during their prehistoric period, nicely restored by the Park Service, and also they're building a Hawaiian house, the typical hale, a thatch roof grass shack. Like most native peoples of the pre-industrial world, the Hawaiians fit right in with their environment. They were lucky to have an ideal environment in which to live. That completes our brief look at Oheo, and now we are driving back to Hana. Returning along the same route is another delightful experience, especially when your cousin does all the driving. Check out this blazing patch of bougainvillea along the road with the reds and the yellows, amazing stuff. It's the same 12-mile drive back to Hana, completing our look at the beaches and pools south of town. We have more movies about the rest of Maui that you can find in our collection. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.